is called a tap. And it's got a tap, it has, it cuts threads into a hole. Hey, welcome back to the shop. I uh, hear oftentimes that if you have one problem, it may be unsolvable, but if you have two problems, they may solve each other. That's what this is. Uh, I was out on the job site with a brand new Milwaukee drill uh, when a coworker uh, ended up putting this edge right up against a piece of metal as he was trying to drill through, uh, not realizing it, and he burnt the chuck. So we can't get it off. I tried to hammer the bit out so I could replace the chuck, and the whole thing, spring and spring and uh, broke loose. So instead of trying to make this a drill, since I have two, I'm going to try to turn this into a sander, a belt, small little belt sander, since the pneumatic one that was thrown away at work, uh, the pneumatic portion doesn't work, but the belt uh, portion seems to be fine. So we're going to see if we can combine two tools, two non-usable tools, into one usable tool. What could go wrong with this? have to change our approach. Oh, hey, I think I got it to release. Haha, -ha, it came off. I must have, uh, must have bound up on whatever mechanism in here allows it to loosen. Uh, I believe that this piece right here uh, holds, engages the threads on these uh, dogs, latches, I don't know. Anyway, so I gotta get that off somehow. I can't get in there right now to get the screw out. I'm half tempted just to take a bandsaw to it, but this is kind of interesting.
So now we need to secure this in place. To do that, we're going to use this uh, factory uh, clip. I cut off the portion that went this way uh, for space. And then we got to install this ring, uh, snap ring, uh, and that will hold it in place and we'll be able to put a belt on. Apparently you can't run it in reverse. Should have thought about that. <laughs> or I guess I could. I can run this in reverse. I just have to uh, put the screw back in. Maybe we should do that real quick before we get too carried away. All right, so given that our drive wheel is about 700 thou in diameter, for every revolution, uh, it'll move it whatever the circumference of this is. So you'd say 2 pi r. Take that number, divide it by 12 to get it into feet, uh, and then times that by RPM. Uh, so this will do, let's see, 329 feet per minute at max speed of uh, 1800 RPM and then 100 feet per minute at max speed of the 550 RPM setting. A slow dynophile is capable of roughly, I think, 1500 feet per minute. So we are one-fifth the speed at our max speed as a regular dynophile. Now with that said, um, of a slow speed dynophile, with that said, I usually don't go all out on those because they're freaking loud. Uh, usually I go somewhere in the middle, so I think I think at max speed this is just adequate. Um, really we could probably increase this a little bit more um, in diameter and redo this. The uh, Since this is screwed on with right hand thread and this is separate, this nut, but the drive wheel is 9 16 18 thread and I, I could do that on the lathe uh, so I could make a much larger one but it, would it be enough? Uh, just quick off the cuff to get to we'd have to we'd have to have this at 1.4 inches in order to get to 660 feet per minute and one point 
1.4 inches will not fit in here. So we're really not, we don't have any room really to expand. Yeah, that's not really going to fit. It might just, but then we're also throwing this off. The original one was, looks about 865,000 or so. So we're a little smaller than the original, uh, but that was because I turned down the original um, uh, chuck in order to make the drive wheel on this. It's looking pretty good. We need to make a cover for this though, because uh, we don't want any little fingers getting caught in there. Now my first attempt is just about perfect, but it's just a little too thin. Uh, so we're going to need to go ahead and thicken this uh, up a little bit. That should be long enough. I'm a lover jack, baby! That looks about right. Uh, should have left it in there just a little bit longer. It's a little loose. lines honestly probably just practicing uh, without any of this on there is probably a better way to sharpen uh, than not would be my guess so what have we learned about all this well we've learned that good design is tough uh, the more you do the better you get but it's probably going to take more than one iteration to do a, to have it be perfect and air quotes perfect. Um, secondly, don't threaten your audience with a knife. So if you find yourself with two pieces of equipment that don't work separately, maybe you can make them work uh, together. I uh, I would call this a great success. Um, I've already used this uh, a couple times to uh, to sand off a few things that are in tight spaces. Um, I like the fact that I can 3D print an arm. I kind of want to build one more arm with like a big old honking contact wheel on it. You know, like just just ridiculously large, like 
Like, what kind of human being would ever make something like this? And what would it ever be? That's a gr We're doing it now. Probably an eighth of an inch deep. Uh, so it's certainly sanding. This is just pine. Um, yeah, I mean, is it going to remove a large amount of material quickly? No. But, like if you're doing a bowl, the inside of a bowl, I, as a finishing tool, that would, uh, I think this would be acceptable. So I think we have two triumphs here. The first triumph is that we managed to retrofit this Dynafile uh, 2 11206 to this uh, Milwaukee 2902-20 drill. Um, it functions uh, just as I you would expect. It is slower than a typical Dynafile, um, so it's not going to remove a lot of material quickly, but you don't have to have compressed air. Uh, it is not loud and obnoxious to hearing or anyone else, and, and it's quite it's quite portable. Uh, it, it's barely heavier than a, a typical drill. The ergonomics, I don't know if they're there. You know, like typically you would you would I don't know just the way you hold it. It's not quite what you would want, uh, but close. Then um, the second triumph is we've managed using this arm as a template we've managed to create a few useful uh, accessories for it. Some with varying levels of usefulness. We've also got to try out uh, a few mechanisms and, and test a few things as far as RPM and bearings and so forth. Um, like these low end, low, if these were in a low low force, low RPM uh, type of situation, I think this would be perfectly su suitable. Uh, like a kid's toy. Like I was thinking, man, this looks like tank treads, right? Like this is the front of the tank and and you're rolling on the ground like that and it comes to a hill. You can go up and over the hill, that kind of thing. So maybe tank treads in the future with this. The beauty of be having a 3D printer and the ability to model. I taught myself to model uh, in Inventor. Um, it's tough. The, the learning curve was really freaking sharp at the beginning for me. Um, but managed to get through it, bust through it, learned all the little idiosyncrasies, and uh, but yeah, there were some moments where my it felt like my brain was overheating uh, before I uh, before I figured it out, and those were the aha moments, and and those were the successful moments. So if you're in the middle of learning something, don't give up, keep going at it, man. Just left foot, right foot, small steps, they build on each other, and you accumulate knowledge. That knowledge informs your other sets of knowledge. Um, Part of the reason I enjoy tearing these things apart is it teaches me the design, the designs and the solutions that other people uh, had to figure out, right? Like, oftentimes you'll look at something and you say, why did they build it that way, right? You, your first impulse is to say, that's stupid, why did they build it that way? And, and it very well could be that it was a bad design. But, more than likely, if you look at it long enough, you see, oh, that solved this problem. So, when you think you're right, when you think something is a stupid design, I, I, I have been well served by keeping my mouth shut, thinking about it, and inevitably, nine times out of ten, I will find, oh, that's why they did that, 
and if I had opened my mouth and said something uh, mean or degrading, uh, potentially to the, the designer or someone else, um, I would have looked like a fool. Uh, and we're all fools, it's just a matter of whether or not we opened our mouth and confirmed it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, anyway, appreciate you hanging out, and I'll catch you next time.